Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this pen, we have red wigglers. Isenia fetida or Isenia fetida. People call them different things. So these little guys are growing and some of them are, they're getting uh, to adult stage now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a grow out bin beginner basic grow out breeder bin so you guys know how it's done now I'm gonna use this container I believe it's 20 by 15 by 5 and I'm gonna do in here the basic bedding that all other worm farmers do my bedding is a little different and I know that other people do it like I do but the majority of them do it a different way and I'm gonna show you that way in case you want to do it, you know, like that. But you all have seen how I do it also. So we're going to get that started. Okay. So, so far in this bin, these yogurt containers, I like to use these instead of throwing them out. So I put three of these and two and a half or two and three quarters of cow manure in here. And the cow manure is old and aged, so it's not going to hurt them. Um, if you use cow or horse manure, never put it fresh in your worm bins because it'll heat up too fast and it won't be good. Um, so the, other, the only other manure that I know of that you can put straight in here, doesn't have to be composted or anything, is rabbit manure. So this is what we're going to do. So now I'm going to wet this down and then I'll add the other thing. All right, so the peat moss and the manure is nice and damp. I added some lime because... Peat moss can be acidic. In here I have some oyster shell and they're crumbles because, well, I don't feel like putting them through the ground. <laughs> but it's fine. They'll break up and with the wetness and the worms will, you know, eat it and see it's not, it's crumbles, but it does have its fine little powder. So I put that on top and then I give it a good mix. All right, so I put gloves on so I don't get poop on my phone so we're gonna mix this in now I find the easiest way to to get the uh, peat moss to soak up the water is to use warm water um, in the past when I've done cold water it just takes forever so warm water is good but I wait a little bit to put the worms in here because I don't want the temperature in there to be hot and then they all come running out so I just give it a good you know a good mix and um, when I'm ready, I'll bring you back and we're going to go get some uh, red wigglers. So it looks good. The wetness should be about, see, like a, like a sponge that has a little extra liquid in it. Because remember, breeders grow out bins, they like it a little more on the wet side. They just do. This powder is from the peat moss. Look at that. All right, we'll be back. Okay, here we are at the Red Wiggler Nursery. These are the Yasenia Fatitas. So what I do is I have a little container with me and since I put veggie scraps and other things in here, I always look by the food first because you know that's where they're gonna be. So they're pretty much like they're there's a mostly adults in here so that's why we're gonna move them out of here so that the bin doesn't overpopulate and then they self-regulate themselves meaning they're not going to continue breeding if they don't think they have any room so you know it happens so I look for worms that have the clitellum like that oh look I got two eggs on my finger three So we're gonna we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna right. wait so here they are I got a quarter of a pound here some of their bedding is with them see the red wigglers are the little guys these are really pretty red wigglers when I lived in Texas there was a farmer down there that had them and they were huge I mean huge I don't know how we got them like that. I think it's probably like he had them outside because in Texas you can. 
I don't know how he dealt with the fire ants, but they were nice big worms. So I kind of spread them out like that, and I leave them alone. I give them a chance to just go down on their own. And then we're going to cover them with wet newspaper, and then I'm going to feed them. Okay, this look, took less than 10 minutes, and you can see that they're gone already. <laughs> so I use medical tape because I have it around, plus it's easy to use, it's easy to rip, it sticks, and then when you pull it off, it doesn't leave a residue. So I, I, if you want to get this at the dollar store, it's, it's very handy. So now I date, I put red wigglers, a quarter pound, four ounces, today's date, and the day that I'm harvesting, which will be in 21 days. So for 21 days, until then, all I'm gonna do is surface feed this and make sure that it stays damp. I'm not gonna mix it or do anything like that. And we're gonna see how big they are um, in 21 days time. So right now, they're, they're down. I don't see any, so we're gonna feed them. So I'm gonna feed them my worm chow. This is my new blend. I call it Mermaid Tail because it has things in it that are very nutritious and um, I don't know, it's spring and summertime, so. <laughs> um, I add things in here to give them vitamins also um, because the health of the worms is like priority. That way they multiply fast and they're healthy and lively and you know, it, it just keeps them healthier. So as you can see, I have a lot of different things in here. So if you want some, go to my website, thegardenandwormlady.com, and I have it up for sale there. So this is about two ounces. I'm gonna say roughly a little more than two tablespoons. So I'm just gonna surface feed. Now I don't put it on the entire thing because I want them to have room to move away from it if they want to. So now what I do is, since this is moist already, I'm just gonna kind of go like this. It kind of, it kind of puts it a little bit under the surface, but yet keeps it still on top. So now it's newspaper. So I'm not using my new fancy sprayer yet because actually I'm charging it. So I pulled this one out, and we're just gonna wet the newspaper down. Wow, you could tell how well it, it works. <laughs> my gosh so I just make sure both surfaces are damp you know newspaper doesn't take a long time to like wet itself down and soak it up I like using newspaper for this because I get it for free from my post office so any place that you can source free things like that I mean take advantage and use it it's one less thing like you know you gotta like go buy so we're going to keep doing this. I need to pump this thing. We're going to keep it nice and damp. And I don't have to wet the chow because right now the bedding is very wet. Plus I'm wetting the newspaper which is sitting on top of the chow. And it'll also wet it and it'll soak down. So we're looking good here. Now off to my next step. Alright, so I wet down a piece of burlap. I cut it 20 inches wide. And this will also stay moist. Now sometimes here I put a piece of bubble wrap, but I'm out of bubble wrap. I could use Walmart bags, but honestly I didn't bring any down here with me. Um, I don't recommend using garbage bags that are scented. Um, I never have, but you know sometimes you pick up a garbage bag and it's like smells really strong of like flowery smell. Like I don't know if the worms will be bothered by that, so I've never tried. But anyway, if you want a burlap worm blankets, we call them, they're on my website for sale. And um, we're gonna keep this, we're gonna keep this going. So now I'm gonna put this one up there and we're gonna keep an eye on it. So now I'm gonna get to work on my other worms. I gotta feed everyone and all the European night crawlers here and just make sure everyone's okay. I have my swamp worms there. I have the everybody bin there. <laughs> I have the red wigglers here. Notice how I have the red wigglers separate from everyone. No connection um, because I don't want them near each other. And then these two are European night crawlers. So while I'm here, let's let's peek at the um. And my hands are are I washed them. Let's peek at the at the ones that have everybody in here.
Okay. Oh boy, look at them. They're having a they're having a party. They like my chow and this is a corn that I had left over that no one was gonna eat and I wrapped it in paper towel. And oh I could see a teeny teeny little baby there. See him? So let's let's pull this up and see what we find in here if they're they're already going at it. Oh yeah, look at that. Now, as you can see, so far, everyone is just living in harmony. Yeah, they're starting to get at it. Look down there. So in here I have European nightcrawlers, red wigglers, Louisiana swamp worms, and I have African nightcrawlers. Um, you can see one of the Africans right here. They're all living together. Now, I don't know if one species is going to outdo the other. I Honestly, I've never put this many together, but we're going to see what's going to happen. And um, if you guys are interested, maybe I'll sell these down the road. I wouldn't put these outside, though. I would keep these indoors in a farm because the African nightcrawlers are very uh, sensitive to cold, so you don't want to do that. Uh, but it looks like they're having a good time in here. And this is... Um, some of my chow that sprouted so when this happens I just I just pick up the pieces and throw them back in there and the worms eat them and it goes to show you how um, castings you know are very uh, healthy and will make things sprout so <laughs> look at this African nightcrawler now for you guys that are new here I had all of these African nightcrawlers and we had an ice storm here and as much as I put the heat up upstairs in my house, my basement down here, the wormery, hit about 60, and a lot of them didn't make it. So the ones that did make it, I have some in my worm tower, and then I put them in here. So hopefully next winter we won't have that problem. But, you know, it happens. So don't beat yourself up, you know, if, if things like that happen and, you know, it's out of your control. Okay, for those of you that are wondering what this blue stuff is, I like I like to mess around with food coloring and try different things on their bedding and their food. Um, it is not petroleum based, which a lot of food colorings are. I buy the ones that are water water based because petroleum will clog the skin of the um of the worm and then obviously they can't breathe so they're gonna die but the water-based one it just it's water so it's fine and I tried different things you know and and I've done it for years and nothing has ever happened to the worms and I don't know I think it's funny sometimes to come in here and just see a different color <laughs> so that's something you can play around with but remember don't buy petroleum based you have to specifically look for the ones that say water soluble no petroleum um, I have a friend, he's a wormer for years. He wrote two books, I believe his name is Paulie. And uh, he talks about it also, on how they have to be water-based. So we're gonna, we're gonna cover these back up because I am not ready to work with them yet. So I'm gonna go wash my hands, guys, and then I'm gonna deal with the rest of them and get them going for the day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, watch my videos, subscribe if you're new here, and, uh, and take care. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.